We're going to end today with our usual Bookster segment. Sarah's out today, but we've got um, uh, Adam Sparrow with us from Bookster. He's a content producer over there. Welcome, Adam. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. And what have you brought with you today? I'm like, sort of <laughs> We have Kobe here today. <laughs> Dion Leonard is with you. Um, he's a marathon runner, and he um, has – I'm not even going to try to tell the story. Um, why don't why – don't, Well, he's an a, a – Daryl – Dion is an ultra marathon runner. Uh, Dion Leonard, and he's got his dog. Obviously, you can see he's been drinking out of the bold cup. The dog's name is Gobi, so we are so glad to have Dion and Gobi here. Yeah, D- Dion, tell us, tell us why you brought this adorable dog, and why you wrote <laughs> this book called Finding Gobi. Well, I was running a six-stage, seven-day race across the Gobi Desert in China, 155 miles. This little stray dog would actually join me on day two of the race, and uh, she would end up running 77 miles. We would form an unbreakable bond. During the race. The dog ran that, 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 that far. Yeah. Those little legs. 125 degree Fahrenheit. I mean, the most inhospitable conditions you can think of. These little legs powered her through and she chose me and she wanted to be with me. And, uh, yeah, we, we started to fall in love with each other. And uh, the story went from there. Our, our bond was formed, but uh, it would be tested when she went missing in a city of 3 million people in China. Tell So we'll find out more about that in the book, so don't give it completely away, but... but how did that happen and how did, I mean, how long were you two separated? Well, after the race had finished to when we actually found it was close to six weeks, but uh, she was missing for around 10 days and uh, oh. finding her was a, an incredible roller coaster ride and we, we never really thought we were ever going to do it, if I'll be honest. I always thought it was going to be a complete miracle. Uh, and to see her finally um, was just an incredible sight to see that she was still alive and uh, she was in a really bad shape when we found her, but uh, it, it was amazing. Um, any, any idea where, where she came from? You, she just kind of joined you on this race, which I think is really the fascinating part of it all. She, you, were doing, you didn't go with a dog. You came back with a dog. <laughs> she didn't have a family. She, or, do, or do you know where, where her origins are? No, she actually started on day one of the race and she joined some American runners and it was only on that evening when I saw her around the campfire that night getting some food off some of the other runners that I came to think, there's a cute little dog. That's pretty smart. She's getting food off people. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to feed her because you have to carry all of your food and kit to survive the week as well. So you know exactly how much food you've got and uh, you're not going to share it with anyone. Of course, Gobi forgot to pack her kit. So <laughs> <laughs> we had to start feeding her as well. What did, but when you, so you gave her some of your food by the end? By the end. You we, just couldn't help she yourself. She was sleeping in my arms. We were running together every day, most days. And, uh, yeah, we, we had just fallen for each other and there was nothing that anyone there wouldn't have done for her. It wasn't just me, but there was other people throughout the race were feeding her as well. She, she just thought it was one big party with all this food. <laughs> did, it, did it teach you anything? Adam, bring you in here. You, the book, the message in the book, what do, you, what do you think it imparts to people who read it or what did you get from it? Well, that's the great thing about the book is there's something bigger than just the story of finding the dog during the race. There's there's an emotional side. You talk about your childhood and like almost a spiritual element to how you found Gobi. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to talk too much about it, but I think that's that's like the most powerful aspect of the book. Yeah, I often say that finding Gobi was one of the most difficult things that I've ever done, but her finding me was one of the best, and I've had, uh, you know... Uh, destructive sort of volatile abusive upbringing and being able to uh, help Gobi through the situation when she needed someone to be there to help her to give her a better life was what I needed when I was younger but I was able to provide that for her so it's put some closure to some of the things of my youth and uh, it's been it's such a she's been such a great part of my life it's been incredible that this story has uh, has developed into what it is now what do you hope people take from the book when they read about this story well, it's a, it's a heartwarming, uh, joyful story, but it's also an inspirational story as well. And I think it can provide many different uh, aspects for people out there to actually take um, life in general and to be able to look forward and to, to realise that there is a better life out there and to get around the right people. And, to, you know, we had so much support and love and uh, people looking for it from all around the world. It was just, it's brought everyone together because there's so much sad and bad news out there at the moment. And you never really know when change is going to walk into yeah. your life, right? But it's, she's probably the best behaved guest we've ever had. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ever. She, exactly. We've got someone, Tony Botting says, go be for president. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's heard that a lot, actually. <laughs> we live in the UK as well, and go be for prime minister there as well. She could be a power. <laughs> How old is she? 
Do you know? Uh, she's going to be three years old on the 20th of June. Oh, wow. So that's she was just a young. little young one when she was running with yeah, you. Yeah, and that's our anniversary of us meeting from the race last year. And most of the vets that have looked at her have said she's between two and three. So that's why we're using that date to celebrate it. Then this was in the Gobi Desert. Uh, and so you, d- you don't know where she came from. Is she from that region? Yeah, well, we, we think so. And uh, it's, uh, it's... She came from another dog. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about teach me more later <laughs> does she still run with you does she still do you're, you're an ultra marathoner that's right I still do some ultra marathoning but uh, Gobi's actually retired from the sport and we still like to get out in Edinburgh run around the mountains there and have some fun together and you can't stop her when she starts it's uh, it's beautiful to see when we found her and after being missing she was in a really bad shape and we had to operate on her leg so it's taken some time for that to recover but happy to say that she's back now she's ready to go again so Beautiful story of, of friendship and how your life can change uh, really in an instant. Thanks for that, Gobi. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much to Dion Leonard and to Adam. Um, you guys can find this on Bookster. You know exactly how to do it. Um, there's a social uh, – um, there's a – I don't know why my brain just farted all of a sudden, but you know how to find it on, on Bookster, and we appreciate both of you uh, for being here. And thank you too, Gobi, for guess. being so Gobi. incredibly well-behaved. Does Gobi know how to do tricks? <laughs> No. She, she ran. She, she ran. ran. Yeah, I mean, okay, fine. <laughs> well, now that she's retired, I can I can train you. We, we train my dog. She's sitting on that desk for twenty minutes, there without making a peep or moving. It. That's. I wish you could. I could treat, teach my dog that trick. Um, we need to treat. We need to teach a whole bunch of y'all, of, of people, how to be as well behaved as you. Thank you again, Adam and Dion, um, and Gobi. Bye, Gobi. And thank you all. Oh. Very <laughs> <laughs> Carrie's taking. No, it totally could be just wagged her tail at me. Oh. And I'm saying bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys all very much for being here. The phone's beeping, which means our time is up, yes. unfortunately. But we'll be back here, or um, Adam will be back here on um, Tuesday at 9 a.m. for Bold Business. And we'll be back here on Friday at 10. Thanks so much for joining us. Share it, share it, share it with your friends. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.